lineup's been going well. Uh, we've been playing extremely well. Pitching has, has been really important in this run that we've had and needed to continue. You had mentioned the other day that Didi's kind of flown under the radar with how well he's been playing, but there are other guys that are kind of stealing the spotlight. He said he's a guy that's always kind of flown under the radar. When he first got here, what type of expectations did you have for him, and has he now exceeded those expectations? No, I don't think he's exceeded the expectations. We thought he could be a really good player. Um, you know, I think for D.D., you know, he came in a tough sp spot in a sense. He wasn't really replacing Derek. Derek had retired, but still, I mean, the, the memories of Derek will, will never fade here, and there are high expectations at that position. And, you know, I think the first month he tried a little bit too hard, and then he started to relax and realized he was the guy, um, and he was going to be the guy, and he was going to play every day, and he's played at a really high level. There was a question coming in. Could he hit lefties? Could he do it consistently? What does it say about him, the way he has worked on that particular aspect well, of his offensive game? It says a lot about him, the way he's worked and, and went at it and had so much success off of left-handers the last couple of years. I, and he's a complete player. Um, he does so many things right. And, yeah, he's flown under the radar. But we have a lot of guys that are flying under the radar because of Aaron Judge, really. I mean, that's the talk and, and what he's been doing. George and I were talking about it. The, both of those deals... D.D. and Castro, those are two deals that went under the radar where essentially Cash gave up nothing. Yeah, I mean, these have been really important pieces for yeah, us. Totally. And, I mean, Castro's flown under the radar with the year that he's had. Um, I mean, he's just had a tremendous year, too. So these guys are, you know, you run them out there every day. They play every day. They play at a very high level every day, and uh, they've been a big part of our success. What's been the difference with Pineda? Is, is it just what you guys expected all along is finally yeah. coming to fruition? It's been consistency with Michael. Um, because we've seen, you know, last year we saw brilliance at times. Um, but he's been more consistent, and he's been able to end innings better this year. In spring training, when you were deciding between Hicks and Judge, uh, was there a point at all where Hicks was ahead and, and that Judge was in danger of going back to triple A? Was that ever on the table? What, remember back at that point? Well, I think, you know, early on in spring training, Hicks, he was ahead. You know, he was a little bit ahead of Aaron. Um, and, and we knew the potential that, that both of them had. Uh, but, you know, you're kind of basing it off the year before and, and kind of what they had done in their years, and they both were playing well. But, um, you know, I thought it really clicked for, for Aaron Judge the last 10 days to two weeks offensively for him. And as the bats became more consistent and the strikeouts, you know, were cut down and you saw him start to drive the ball. So it was – but it was really close. I mean, it was a difficult decision because they both played well. Their numbers both were, were really good. But I thought, you know, Aaron Judge probably had a better last 10 days, you know. And if we would have played another 10 days, who knows what would have happened. Um, but, you know, I told Aaron that, you know, he had to be ready. Aaron Hicks. It's confusing that they're both Aarons. Um, and, and he was. When he was called upon, he was ready to go. So two guys that have played really well. Was there a moment where a, a certain bat that you said to yourself, I need Judge on this team? Do you, was there a moment you can remember thinking, I, I need this guy? I don't think there was necessarily a, an, a, a, a certain bat. I think it was just the last 10 days what we saw and the strides that he made and um, the plate discipline and what we were looking at. We thought, you know, we think he's really getting it. The, what you're doing now, weren't the seeds of this really planted after the trade deadline last year? Because oh, I think so, yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, we felt that we weren't good enough to, to win the World Series with what we were doing, so we had to make some changes, and, and, you know, the kids came up, played pretty well. And I thought they energized our club last year, and I think they're continuing to do it. They're a big part of our team. Um, and I think sometimes, you know, with our club, we forget how – you know, Didi's not really old, and right. Castro's really not old, and, and we have a lot of young players. You know, the job that Severino's done, I mean, the way he stepped up, the way Montgomery has stepped up. Um, but again, I said that, you know, the young players, if we were relying only on the young players, we wouldn't win. The old players had to do their job, and, and that's helped to the older players. Right. Well, I remember you clearly talking about it, that you guys were going to continue to do everything you could w to win. We did. And you did. I mean, you almost made the playoffs, basically, you know, with, with, the, with the reconstituted team. Yeah. I mean, we just felt like we had to make some changes. Um, we had to get younger. We had to let some of our younger players play and, and, and grow up. But we were still trying to win every day. And we had a pretty good last two months. We did um, with our young kids. And... Um,
it's helped this year. Now, when you when players like like the two Aaron's or Severino, they spend some time in the off season working on things. How how much of the input for that comes from the organization, or is it just the players on their own kind of thinking, okay, I need to do this? How does that? No, I I think it comes from the a lot of it comes from the organization, and and for a player, you get to see also when you play at this level where you need work. I mean, weaknesses get exposed really quickly here, and um, yeah, every game's on TV, so every everybody's watching, um, so they get game plans and how to attack you if, if you're a pitcher or how to attack you if you're a hitter. So they understand what they have to work on. We make suggestions. Um, you know, they're given programs they're expected to do, and they go do it. Um, but it takes a lot of hard work on their part. The, you know, you can give them the plan, but they have to actually go do it. It's like playing the game. I can put a lineup up, but it really comes down to how they swing the bats that night. Um, so I give all these guys a lot of credit because they went to work and understood what they needed to do and made adjustments. Does it come in the form of like an exit interview or is it something that's written out? Or? It's talking during the course of the time that they're there, what we want you to work on. I mean, I mean I've, I've told guys they have to work on their sliding. I mean, you would think at this level that was not the case, but it is sometimes. Um, you know, my good buddy Paul O'Neill wasn't very good at sliding, you know, and so you talk to guys about different things that this is what I see, this is what we need to work on, and go go do it. Do you guys do the what, what's become common now where you have a different plan almost written down for everybody at, with what they do yes. nutritionally, workouts? Yeah, they get all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they get it all. There's stages of the workouts during the winter. Matt Krause goes down to the Dominican Republic. I mean, he'll go different places. He'll go see players in the winter. I mean, he, you know, he lives in Tampa, so a lot of guys are there. I mean, we try to keep, you know, in contact as much as we can with them. But the bottom line, it comes down to the player. Sure. The player has to want to get better and understand this is what I need to work on. Anything new with Chapman? Well, he was supposed to pitch tonight. Um, weather doesn't look too good, so we might have to push back a bit. Where was he tonight? Uh, Bradenton. How about Greg Bird? Anything new? They were off yesterday. But anything as far as like a timeline? Nope. Or no. Nope. No. Joe, if Chapman gets pushed back, does it shouldn't affect it really for the weekend. But so Saturday would still be a possibility. To go yeah, I mean, if he pitches Friday, we'd probably activate him Sunday. Judge is still ahead in the All Star voting. I think you said in the past that you wouldn't have a problem if he was in the home run derby. Uh, right. why, why is it that some guys are affected and someone like Judge wouldn't be in your mind? Um, just from from watching his BP, I have a better idea. Um, you know, some guys don't have the power to all fields like Aaron Judge has. I mean, you watch him t do his work in BP. There's a lot of homers going to right, and there's a lot of homers going to center. It's just not pull, 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 pull. Sometimes you worry about the physical nature of that, them getting hurt. Sometimes you worry about them doing something they don't do in the course of a game. Um, but you watch his BP. His first round, he's hitting balls out to right field. Or some guys are working line drives and ground balls. He's hitting them out sometimes. So that's more why, because to me, it'd just be a normal BP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Green's back to bullpen, right? Yeah, I mean, our, our guess is he's, you know, my thought is he'll do a light side maybe today, and he'll be available Thursday, Greeny.